right, so what's a load balancer and why would you use one? Okay, so let's say you're a company and you host www.xyz.com. That's your, your main website. People come on there and buy whatever widgets you happen to sell. And that's what you make all your money off of. So you've got this website sitting in your data center hosted on a server for now. Um, the problem with that is down here on number one, that server has finite resources. What do I mean by that? Well, one individual server only has so much processing power, so much memory, so much disk space, and then there's also network limitations in terms of the TCP IP uh, protocol suite in terms of the number of actual connections that it can serve up, um, whether it's TCP, UDP, whatever. Um, so there's a problem with putting everything, putting all your eggs on one in one basket, for lack of a better term. Uh, so you have a physical server that has a finite number of resources. The second thing, and the biggest, is no downtime. You know, how many different companies out there who run their networks don't allow, you know, any planned downtime or any maintenance ones that you have are, are very, very short and they're at very odd hours of the uh, of the night so to, to minimize the, you know, any potential outages to customers. So that's the big thing here. Finite resources, no downtime. Well, how does that play into the load balancer up here? So load balancer is a, it's a piece of hardware. Yes, it can be a virtual um, software construct inside of a virtual environment, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just say it's a physical piece of hardware. On that physical piece of hardware, you have connections going to multiple servers, typically. Um, maybe they're not physically connected into it, but logically they kind of fall behind the actual load balancer. And um, you know, why would I have multiple servers? Well, I'll go back to number one: finite resources. What if I could host my www.xyz.com website on more than one server? What if I could put it on these three servers right here? Well, if I can do that, then I can share the load. I can balance the load across those three systems. So I can handle far more connections because now I have three servers instead of one, so I can use all of their resources. That's the first thing. And the second thing, with no downtime, if I have a problem with one of these servers, I can actually shut it down and continue to serve traffic to the other two servers that are actually remaining. So that's kind of the basics in a, in a nutshell of, of you know, what a load balancer is and why, why you would actually use it. Um, so things like uh, I mentioned maintenance. So let's say you know, server one has an actual problem and I need to take it down. Well I can remove server one from the actual load balancer path, continue to serve up connections of two and three, and no one's the wiser. No one knows it's down. I can work on it, do whatever I want. Well let's say it's not just an outage. Let's say you're scheduled maintenance. You know you got to patch servers, you got to um, the basic care and feeding that goes along with maintaining servers, it, it happens. So there's, on occasion, I have to take these things out. What if I released, you know, a new uh, version of the actual website or the application? I'll take it out, update it, put it back in, take the other ones out, update them, put them back in operation, and so forth and so on. Well, so I've got my two servers. Let's say this guy over here has crashed. Um, another thing I can do is I can start adding additional servers. Let's say demand increases and I need to add, you know, I need to double or triple my capacity. Well, I can kind of inject servers into this load balancer and have it start sending traffic to all these different servers, you know, and, and get even greater capacity and even greater uh, uptime capabilities because, you know, I've got um, at least here five servers right now that can, that can, um, handle the load. And I have one load balancer drawn here. Typically you'd have two. I'd have a pair of them. And each server would be connected to both load balancers either physically or through some logical flow in the network. So I would have redundant load balancers. I just didn't draw it because I'm dealing with a finite amount of space. Alright, so that's basically the concept behind a load balancer. Now, there's some more intelligent things you can do with it. Uh, you can do what's called a round-robin load balancing where you know, I send a request to one server and then to the next one and then to the next one and then to the next one and so forth. Or it just kind of goes around in a circle and, and you know, kind of one here, one here, one here. Almost like you're dealing cards for a, a card game or something. 
but it doesn't have to be that simple. You know, I can use something as I, I can do least something like least connected. Well, what if I the load balancer looks at all of these servers right here, finds out which one has the fewest number of connections, and then sends traffic to it. But I could even go a step further than that. I could say, no, I don't want to do least connected. I want to do the least loaded. So I can query these servers and find out, well, you know, how much CPU load is on number six, and how much memory is it using, and what about, you know, number five, how much CPU, how much memory, and so forth and so on, or how many, you know, whatever, whatever value or variable I want to look at. And then I can say, okay, well, two, three, four, and five are kind of busy, but six, six has the most resources free, so I'm going to start just sending traffic to six until it kind of normals out, and then I'll, I'll reassess and, and go back and look at it that way. So that's kind of, you know, just a couple of minutes overview of, of load balancers and kind of what they do, and it's a fairly basic purpose.